If you are someone starting with Git and GitHub and you need simple clear videos to get started, choose the right Git flow and perform various Git actions, then you have come to the right place. I will produce a series of small easy to follow videos which will help you get a good working control of Git and GitHub. My aim is to produce videos for specific common tasks developers need as they start working and progressing with Git. So if you have a project which you are starting new or have a project which was tracked earlier using some other version control system and now you want to track it with Git, in this video I will start with giving a brief introduction to Git and its benefits. Then we will add a couple of global configuration options to Git which are useful when checking in code. Next we will add our code to a local Git repository. Then we will push our changes to a remote repository in GitHub. This way we can start tracking our projects with Git and GitHub. In this video I will use the command line options to add an existing project. For those of you more comfortable with the IDE and using the GUI to do things you can watch my other video adding an existing project to git slash github using Eclipse. Alright let's get started. Git is a free and open source distributed version control system. Unlike other version control systems like CVS or Subversion where each checked out copy points to a central repository, Git provides the developer an entire copy with full history of commits. The developer can work offline, perform commits to their local repository and then push the changes to the central repository when they are ready. This makes working with Git very fast. You can do diffs with the previous versions locally and not have to go to the central repository and incur network overheads. Further, Git has a light footprint and provides very cheap branching. I am assuming you have Git already installed. It is a very simple install. So if you google install git, you will find this page where you can see the install instructions. For Ubuntu Linux for example, you can run this command sudo apt-get install git-all. For Mac, you can download the installer and follow the install instructions. Similarly for Windows, there is a download here. You can click the link and the download will start. I already have git installed. Here on the terminal, and I am on Ubuntu Linux over here, let me type git help to get the help on git commands. So here is our project which is a spring boot project I had developed earlier in my video building rest based web services with spring boot. But essentially it can be any project you want to track. Here we see the project structure. Let's say we want to start tracking this project using git. So here back in the terminal let us clear the screen. I'm in the top level folder for my project demo. Let us do ls hyphen latr and we see the files and folders here. Alright the first step is to initialize the git repository. Let's type the command git init. It completes successfully. Let us type in the command ls hyphen latr and we see the dot git folder where the repository is located. We do not want to track the bin and the target folders. So we need to create a file called dot git ignore where we can put the files and folder names for the ones we do not want to track. So let us type gedit.gitignore. You can use notepad on windows or any text editing tool. Let's add the bin and target folders. So slash bin slash and slash target slash. We can also similarly add file names. Of course if the files are not located in the current top level folder, we need to give the path to the nested folder where it's located. Alright, let's save this file. Next, we have to add the files to a staging location, also sometimes called the index. So let us type git add dot as you want to add all the files. It will use the dot git ignore file to ignore the files and folders we do not want to track. You can just add specific files and folders if you want. Let us issue the command git status and here we see that the files are currently staged and ready to be added to the master branch. It has not included the folders we had mentioned in the .gitignore file. Let us now do a git commit to put the files in our local repository. Before that it is useful to set some global settings like the username and email so that it is included with commits. So let us type 
git config hyphen hyphen global user dot name charge ahead to set the username and git config hyphen hyphen global user dot email to set the email. Now let us commit our changes to the local git repository. So type git commit hyphen m to add a message. Adding a comment or message is a good practice to identify the changes. Let's say initial commit and it comes back with a message that the changes are added to the local repository. If we do a git status now, we see no files in the staging area and there is nothing to commit. So from this point on, we can make changes and commit the changes to our local repository, which will track the versions and the diffs. However, for sharing it with others, for review, etc., generally we would like to add it to a remote repository. GitHub is a very popular Git repository hosting service in the cloud. So let's go to the browser and type GitHub, which brings us to its web page. Let us click on pricing and it is free for public and open source projects. So you can click sign up for a free personal account. I have already done it. So let me sign in. Let us click start a project. Let us give a name to our repository. Let's call it demo. Give a description. Leave it as a public repo with the defaults and click create repository. Let us add our project or push our project to this remote repository. Let's first copy the URL for our repo. Now back in our command line, let us type git remote add origin and paste our GitHub repo URL we had copied earlier. So we are adding the remote repository, which we are naming as origin and specifying its URL. Now, finally, let us push our changes to this remote repository. So let's type in the command git push origin master. Let me specify my username and password. And we see that our project is pushed from the local master branch to the remote master branch. Going back to the browser and refreshing it, we see our files and folders in here. Notice it did not bring the folders we chose to ignore using the dot git ignore file. So now we can continue working on our local repo, commit changes to it, and then periodically push our changes to the remote repo when ready. And using this URL, someone can clone this repository to their own machine. Let us summarize what we talked about. In this video, we first talked about Git and its benefits. Git is a very fast, distributed version control system which maintains the commit history locally and supports offline work. Next, we saw how to add our existing project to a local Git repository. Finally, we saw how to create a repository in GitHub and push our projects to the remote repository and start tracking it there. Thanks for watching.